Okay, so let's see, I'm recording. Hello, it's the weekly Sumo oh. platform meeting. <laughs> Roland has just taken off his bike helmet. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Um, just to recap, two weeks ago we had a presentation from uh, user research about Firefox user types. And then last week, uh, everybody uh, was out except for me and Ricky, so I just read the Etherpad and uh, we wrapped it up in like two minutes. Um, so this week, people are back. There are things to talk about. Um, the first one is the these new designs for the product, the topic, and subtopic pages. Um, there's links to bugs there. There's some design... Um, parameters that went into that. Kadir, do you, uh, can you uh, talk about this? this? Like this is going to be the eighth time probably you've said this in a meeting, <laughs> but always good for people to hear. Uh, sure thing. Just a moment. Okay. Yeah, so I've been referring to this for a few weeks now. Now finally we have the full set uh, of articles, uh, sorry, the full set of mockups. Uh, in the three bugs that I've uh, linked from here. Uh, very quickly, I wanted to uh, talk about what our design principles were when we were working on this. Uh, it's also in the Etherpad, but just to be sure. So what we wanted to do is uh, keep the uh, navigation consistent. So making sure that people, uh, w on whichever page they are, understand and uh, where they are and how they can get to the higher level and how they, how they, how they can get to um, deeper into the content. So making sure that spatial navigation uh, works for people, uh, which currently is a concern because the product page doesn't look like anything like the um, uh, topic landing page and nothing like the article landing page. The navigation on those pages is very different. So it's easy to get lost um, while you're on your way to the article. So that was one of the uh, design principles that we had. The other one was that we wanted to show more content on the, uh, product, on the product landing page already. So we wanted to give people a chance to peek into uh, a topic before they had to click through to the topic. Um, so that's, that's also a design principle, making sure that people know more about the topic before they go into it. Um, but at the same time, and this is the third uh, des design principle, we didn't want to overwhelm them on the product landing page, uh, making sure that they still stay with us, they don't, that we don't give them a wall of text. Um, so while, while those were the constraint, uh, constraints, we also had to keep in mind that we have a unique structure in our, I'm not sure if it's unique, but it's, it's uh, not very often that you see this, is that our articles are, um, we have articles on, on, on two levels. Uh, that means that you have topics and you have subtopics, but at the same level as the subtopics, you have articles. And then the subtopics also have articles. So you can't show uh, just subtopics on the product landing page. Like you can't just say, here are the subtopics to this topic. Because when people click through to them, they don't see the articles that actually belong into the main topic. Um, so that was a constraint and um, quite a challenge to work with. So when you look at the mockups, please keep those uh, design principles in mind that we had. But at the same time, please also keep the goals in mind. Um, and, and essentially the goal, what, or, or the two goals here were to make sure that um, we increase the number of people who land on a product landing page and move on to an article and rate that article positively. That's how we know that actually people don't land on random articles. Um, so those, those two were the goals. And, and uh, we, we used those design principles to make sure that we get, that, get those goals right. Uh, if you have any feedback on that, um, on any of those steps, uh, I've linked the articles from the Etherpad. Uh, please leave feedback soon. <laughs> Uh, we want to put this into production um, in two weeks, or starting in two weeks. So the sooner we get feedback on this, the sooner we can iterate, present the next uh, iteration, and move on. Um, yeah, so that's that's about uh, that's all I have about um, product landing pages, topic landing pages. Questions and comments, things people want to ask now.
Kadir, I had a question about um, mm -hmm. so the the topic and subtopic pages look yeah. um, similar to but different than like search results. Um, and I was wondering why that is. Would we change search results or why the why the difference there? I think there are some minor differences, like for example, we're using icons on the search results. We're not using them here. Right. Um, so one of so for some of those, yeah, that that there is a reason why we don't use icons here. Uh, there might be some smaller differences, and then we, for those we can just adjust them, uh, make sure that they look kind of similar. Uh, the thing that we have to keep in mind is that uh, on the product landing pages, we don't only have, uh, sorry, on the topic landing pages, we don't only have articles that we link to, we also have uh, subtopics that we link to. Right. Uh, so some of them right now, they don't have, uh, uh, subtopics don't have descriptions, for example, no search summaries. They could. Uh, we have that built we, in. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. So uh, we, we could have them and we should have them, but at this point we don't. Okay. Um, one of the reasons for that is, do the question uh, that that Ram and I were trying to answer is: Do we even need descriptions for subtopics? Because we deliberately uh, gave subtopics really long names, uh, right. so they kind of explain themselves. Uh, it's not a one. Usually, it's not a one-word um, uh, top subtopic, except for when it's like tabs or bookmarks, where it's clear what it is about. Right. Um, but if, if there is the need, then we can use uh, search summaries. Or we can start the search summaries and see if it makes sense and remove them if they don't. For the icons, it's the same thing. Uh, so we removed the icons here because it seemed like they would just add visual noise without adding any additional information. Um, so yeah, we have a difference between topics and subtop sorry articles and uh, subtopics. But the idea is that people actually don't give Care. First, they don't care whether something is an article or a subtopic, as long as they can click through and finally find the article that they're looking for, as long as they're getting closer to the thing that they're looking for. So as long as that is there, as the center is there, they don't care if something is an article or a subtopic. But more importantly, almost all of our users are first-time users. Right. So even if we have different icons, uh, I mean, Icons are almost never intuitive, so you need to learn them. You need to learn what they mean. And, and it, I mean, by the, they, they are not lo long enough with us for to, to, to learn them. If they came again and again, like if they came to us back, back to us like every other day or something, they would learn the meaning of those icons. But since they only come to us once, and then maybe never again for six months, hopefully, or even never, right. Um, it means that they don't have enough time to even learn what those icons mean, so they would just add visual noise. If you see other differences that are not explained, um, yeah, please let me know or uh, comment in the box so that we can talk about that. Yeah. Essentially, the idea was to make it as, as similar uh, to the search results as, as possible. Oh, Berlin, you got you to do your thing over there. Uh. <laughs> it's like every Thank 10 you. minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Yeah, uh, but but essentially you want to have something that is similar to, to the search results, but not not at any cost. Right. Uh, no, no, I mean, I guess the thing, I, when I look at them, you know, like in the mock-ups, we have, um, I guess, titles uh, on the topic and subtopic pages are like bolder and they're, they're blue link of, blue, like links, and on search it's a uh, uh, thinner, larger, but then not blue, like links, and you know they they get a underline on hover or something. Um, okay. Uh, you know, I, I oh, per yeah. personally, so, yes, I think there is a reason for that. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. There is. Yeah. Yes. Uh, for why to actually make it, make those things blue. And that is, uh, you want to make you want to make it clear that those are things that you can click to, um, and everything on our page when it's just clickable is actually blue. Right. So what you have is, um, so you you have the sidebar, uh, and and you want to make sure that people know, okay, there's the sidebar, but here's the content. Click through, please. Yeah. This is the stuff to click through to. Um, 
I'm not sure if you have the same issue on the search uh, results page. We could talk about that too, uh, because yeah, I mean, the search results page probably should also uh, make that as clear as possible. But especially when you go from the product landing page to the topic landing page, you still have the um, uh, the the main um, the main topics in the sidebar. Uh, so, but you want to make you want to yeah. refocus the attention to the center where the actual action is. Um, so that's what why he made why Brown made that blue. We actually had a different we had a number of different designs, but it seemed like in the different in the other designs, um, it, it was uh, toned down. So you you would have a, bl a brown link or something or a black link, um, and yeah, it, it it was just it didn't look like it was clickable. Right. Cool. Anything else people want to know about this, or you just want to comment in bugs? We love commenting in bugs. It's yeah. so much fun. <laughs> so cool. OK. All right, so moving on. Hot topic threads. So Madalena, do you want to explain this one like you explained it to me yesterday? Yes, yeah, so Kadir and I started this discussion about hot topic threads like two weeks ago and we had a dilemma which is basically how are we going to do this and how are we actually going to choose them um so in our last discussion it was basically okay let's let's bring it up to the platform meeting and see how michael does it because you're dealing with, with the hot topic uh, articles um, so I'm not sure because I was on PTO last week. I'm not sure, uh, Kadir, if we had any updates on this or if there were more discussions or any decisions were taking, taken. So I would just like to bring this up again on the table and see where right. we're at. Uh, last week, I think I was on PTO. Was that the three-minute meeting? Yeah. I think it was. We didn't, yeah. Talk, we didn't talk about it in there. Okay, well, basically the questions are, how do, are we going to do this? Are we going to do this in an automatic way or in a manual way? Um, I know that you, Michael, you are basically relying on user advocacy um, to bring you the, the hot topics, but this is a bit different in threads because, I mean, if we have to look through all the threads every day, that's kind of a lot of work. Right. Um, so I'm not sure how to go around this. Should we have like some automatic criteria? Like this was my proposition. Should we have some automatic criteria to select, let's say, like 20 threads, and then from there we can have somebody looking manually and deciding what goes, what is considered hot or not, or maybe something else. Um, so what do you guys think? Yeah, I mean that was. Yeah, that was the kind of result, or that's what we were getting at and yesterday when we were talking, was a, a tool to like narrow down the uh, hundreds of questions uh, down to, you know, tens. That, and then someone could pick, you know, because sometimes you might have two or three threads that are basically the same question, and one of them is worded better and the solution is more clearly marked than another or something. And it would be beneficial to say, pick this one, not that one. Um, um, also, though, the, the other thing about um, automatic um, is the, um, like, if you left it as some automatic threshold, there could be the thing that, like, things would never leave the hot topics. And really, mm -hmm. if it's going to stay there more than, we'd have to set this up probably as a, as a guideline, right? If it's going to be there more than, like, I don't know, two weeks, we should probably just turn it into an article already, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and, and have it properly documented. Um, so, uh, yeah, it kind of feels like some sort of automatic, like, cut it down to a manageable number, but then still like rely on forum moderators to say this is a good one or something. Or... Actually, that was my, uh, yeah, I, I think that's probably the best way to go, uh, automatic and, and, and the manual part to it. Like automatically cut it down to a number that is reasonable for the product landing page. 
at the same time rely on uh, contributors to uh, elevate things up there. So one idea was to tag articles or tag threads that should be displayed there. So you would just give it a tag hot and it would pick it up and uh, put it onto the product landing page. The same way you just remove the tag and it's removed from the product landing right. page. It's a hot, hot discussion. Yeah, that could be the mechanism um, for, for, for taking something from the list of, of the you know, 20, 30 hot forum threads and saying, put this one on the front page. Is by just giving it the hot topic, like we do an article. Mm -hmm. uh, you mean a pool, like uh, you have a pool of twenty, and then someone picks manually what to put in there? Yeah, that's what that's what Madeline and I were talking about. Like, so imagine you have like uh, uh, this is how I'm thinking in my head. Imagine you have a dashboard that says list all the threads that get like more than. I don't know, 5,000 views this week and um, are they rated the most helpful, you know, order them by like the most helpful or, or have a solution, it has to have a solution, uh, you know, those kind of things, right? So out of the 300 questions we'd get in a week, maybe only 15 or 20 would meet those criteria. Those are like the bigger issues, I would think, that week. And then some of those are duplicates, probably same same question, um, um, or whatever. But then that's where we rely on, uh, you know, contributors, just anyone, right, who has the privilege to to do that. Then to say, ah, this, these two are about um, this flash issue or whatever. But this one is worded better, right. solutions clearer. I'm going to give this the hot topic so it goes on the front page. The other one we'll ignore for now. Mm -hmm. And then someone has to say, oh my god, that one's not going away. Let's write an article. And then once we write an article, take it out of the hot topics. Yeah. OK. Yeah, that sounds great to me. Uh, so, and absolutely, I, I, that would be totally a viable way, I think, um, and a workable way. We already have something like that. Uh, we, we can whip that up quickly, the, the dashboard kind of thing, to see which ones uh, we should consider. Uh, we Actually, the forum listing today can do that. Um, it just doesn't have the UI, the complete UI. Anyway, right. uh, what, what, what I was also thinking, and this is I'm just throwing this out there so to get some feedback maybe, but um, giving this totally to contributors, so our contributors now, which one, which threads just came up and get a lot of feedback or get get a lot of questions or get a lot of me too votes, see that, and if if it hits a thir certain threshold, uh, they decide whether to make it a hot topic or hot discussion thread or not. So they just add the um, they just add the uh, what is it called the label to it, so it appears on top. Um, mm -hmm. What we can do is we can say we always have only three threads on top at any time. So anytime you push a new thread up there, um, one thread gets pushed out of the uh, thread. So you always uh, list the three latest ones, for example. Um, and anytime uh, you push a new one, uh, the, the, the oldest one is moved out. What that Oh, did Kadir break up for everybody or just me? Oh, look, it's me. Everybody's frozen. The system is more dynamic, so things are changing more quickly. And also, you often want to have, like, the forum is more like on, on, on some end for the long tail, but on the other hand, for things that haven't propagated to an article yet. Um, so the forum thread might only be there for a day or two before it's replaced by something else that is now a bigger issue. Um, and then if you do it that way, it, it means it's very quick. So I, as a contributor, can decide, hey, actually, this is probably something, it looks like a lot of people are asking this now, or uh, it's something like a lot of people seem to have this issue, so just make it a hot thread. It moves up there. And you don't have to think too much about it, because it's going to be replaced by something else in a day or two. Right, so I think that we should open this up for discussion on our computer forum to see what people think. Um, 
I think it's a good idea, but we will need to discuss the criteria. So in order to have some kind of you know structure, so we don't kind of add topics just randomly, but you know, so everybody says okay, okay. Topic. Uh, Open that uh, that discussion up, and I think we'll we'll, we'll get somewhere. Yes. No. Okay. I keep. I guess I keep cutting out, but uh, I I think I agree with what you just said. Yeah, I think the mm -hmm. idea would be not to not to have a situation where I personally just answered three questions that were all the same but then and say "Ooh, I think I need to promote this to the hot topics but that's the only three people that had that issue you know yeah exactly yeah so it's a all policy right. thing rather than a technical yeah. issue yeah. Okay. Exactly. well Michael you have experience with that hopefully you can help uh, draft yeah. uh, a policy <laughs> Well, I mean, and that's, I guess that's why I was, I was thinking of like um, some sort of uh, automated thing to like show, show me, you know, according to this criteria, what ones it seems like lots. So I don't have to dig through all of them and see which ones lots of people are, are seeing or voting on. Mm -hmm. And maybe like yeah. you said, that's just, we put some sort tools on the UI that we already have or something, make it super easy. Right, and I mean, we, can, we could even combine those two ideas. Um, like you would still select that from a limited pool, but anytime you select something, the oldest one is pushed out, right. so you don't have to think about like how long do I keep that there or right. whatever. Yeah. Cool. Well, I, I, yeah, I guess we can continue the discussion in the forum thread then. And uh, Madlena, can you link the forum thread where this is happening? I only have the, I've seen the bug, but... Oh, no, there, is, there isn't any. I was just saying okay. we should open Oh, okay. So can we give that to you, Madlena? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll finish writing that after, because I cannot type and talk. Um, all right, anything else about Hot Topic Threads? So roadmap. So, so I asked uh, I asked Kadir to uh, update us because because you know because we don't talk about it every week and I have already forgotten where the heck we are. So I'm sure maybe somebody else has too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, actually, I, I should have have done this before because we said that in the middle of each quarter we would talk about the roadmap again, and I think we are pretty much in the middle of the quarter now. Uh, so I'm going to send, send around uh, an email and also post this uh, online to make sure that we collect new ideas for the next quarters uh, and see if the, uh, if the roadmap that we, have, that we currently have is still, uh, if we are on track, if we are okay with, the, with what's in there. Um, that said, uh, the current roadmap, you can only see that um, on, on the travel board, there is a special travel board which has the roadmap, I update it all the time. So it's always, that's the latest version. Um, that's the canonical version of our roadmap. And at, at least uh, the current quarter and the next quarter are already filled in. Uh, nothing beyond that sometimes, but at least the current and the next quarter. Um, so that's the uh, uh, Trello board there. Then we have a Trello board uh, that is, th that, that I, create specifically for each uh, quarter. And that is more for me uh, to and for the developers to see what, what we are working on in each sprint. Uh, but if anyone is interested, I, I just link that from here so uh, you can see what's happening uh, in what sprint. And also, uh, I link to uh, the Kitsune development either pad where, where both of these uh, those things are linked from. So anything that I have that is interesting that you should know about Kitsune development, is linked from the other pad. Um, what we can, what I can, I can talk a little bit more about the current quarter. Uh, so right now, uh, we are working on uh, the ask a question integration. Uh, we just finished the HTML emails, um, 
And uh, next, we are going to uh, work on the uh, uh, topic, subtopic navigation pages. Um, and right after that, the community management tools uh, are in our queue. And so for search improvements, next month we are taking one search improvement. That's it's the synonym rings in the dictionary. Next quarter. Um, next excuse quarter. me, next quarter. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's not next month, but right after that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so in the, in the third quarter, this, the first thing in the third quarter is synonym rings. Uh, and we're going to see how uh, what the effect of that is on our search results. And based on that, we can decide. Um, the next thing is already on the roadmap, which is tailored search. So we can decide whether tailored search is the next thing that, should, that we should be working on. Um, but th that is that is currently uh, the next thing that we have in the, in the next quarter. Then we have open badges, which uh, Roland has already been very active in defining. Um, so we have, and, and that is broken down into manual badges that we give out uh, on our own manually, but also automatic badges that are given out when you cross a certain threshold. Uh, tailoring Kitsune to US uh, target markets, I'm, uh, currently that's what I'm def uh, trying to define uh, with also people from engagement team um, on, on how to make, make sure that Kitsune works well on devices that are sold in certain markets. Like we know that Brazil uh, the, the reception in Brazil is pretty bad. So uh, even though there are, they have they have 3G, uh, many many more people than in, in, like for example North America are using one station. So that means that data connection, even though you have 3G, is very slow. So we have to somehow make sure that those people still can get support, even if their connection is really bad. And it would be bad to have connection issues and then not being able to connect to support to actually solve that issue. So we are looking into how we can uh, make sure that, that that's not a problem, like um, maybe having a Firefox so as, as, um, Kitsune pre-installed or articles pre-installed or making them uh, smaller. A anything that we can do to make sure that people get that content, even if uh, their data connection isn't that good or if it's very ex expensive. Uh, yeah, what else? Lifecycle management tools. Yeah, so we have so many KB articles. We're getting more of them. Uh, I think we're going to kind of like double or so our, our KB probably this year or next year with Firefox OS. And we need to make sure that we can keep uh, track of the articles, which ones are important, which ones we should archive, uh, which ones we should look at. Like all that, the complete life cycle from creation to archiving an article. Uh, we, we need tools to, to um, make sure that we don't have we don't have to repeat ourselves when we have to look over all of them. Um, apart from the fact that one person won't be able to look at all of them anymore soon. Yeah. So yeah, and and the last thing that I have here for the next quarter is contributions on mobile. So we are focusing more and more on mobile, but so far. We have uh, focused more on, on users on mobile. So in the next quarter, we can look into what we can do for contributors, like maybe Army of Awesome, uh, making sure that it's easier to use on mobile, or the forum. Yeah, so um, essentially giving contributors tools so that they can uh, work with us, so work on Sumo, um, also from the mobile phones. Um, yeah, but that's that's what we have currently planned. It doesn't none of none of this is uh, actually uh, set in stone. Um, so, if you if you have any ideas that should be on the roadmap, uh, I'm going to send around an email for that uh, to make sure that everyone knows what the process for that is. But it's totally possible, and we want to make that. We want to actually look at the roadmap every six weeks, and and decide whether that is still the way to go, or, or whether something else something has happened that means we have to change it. And I, I have a hunch that once Firefox OS launches, uh, we might have some changes that we want to make for the roadmap. That's just a hunch. Something might come up. Right. Something will come up. <laughs> Let, <No>. Let's see. <laughs> so yeah, but that's that's what we have planned. Uh, but um, who knows what happens after July? Cool. Questions about the roadmap right now? No? Okay. Uh, moving on. 
me, Ebai, Kadir, will all be out next week? Should we still have this meeting? I mean, you are all... Where are you guys going? You are all Party. more than welcome to have this meeting, Party. but you could also take an extra hour back in are your you day. Vacation? Are you partying at a conference? No, that would be good. Kadir's <laughs> working on his, uh, his uh, what, your master's test mm -hmm. stuff? Yeah, the last exam. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought maybe you were meeting in Berlin or London or something. That'd be cool. Yeah. That would be cool. <laughs> I might, I might be uh, playing video games. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> I don't know what anybody's doing. I'm traveling, California. All right. So. Um, yeah, I'll record on thirtieth. Roland, and, uh, Madalena, okay. Rosanna, Matt, do you guys want to meet next week or you want to skip it? You can skip it. Yeah. I'm fine okay. with skipping it, just not two weeks in a row. Yeah. If the main <laughs> are out, yes. Yeah. All right. And so then, Roland, you can record on the 30th because I won't be here then. But, um, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Holy cow, it's 35 after. Anything else to add? No? All right, we have one action item, Madalena, to start that discussion about the hot thread topics, topic threads, whatever the heck. I can't figure out how to, what to say there, but that thing, start a discussion about it. OK, right. cool. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Uh, Kadir, I don't have anything. <laughs>